Before we do that, I need to remind the good people out there that if they are looking to snap into any gambling action this season, they better be using FanDuel.com slash UCSS to get in on all the action. We asked for some tickets yesterday, and wait till you see one of the winners we have coming up in a sec. But if you join FanDuel today, new customers get $200 in bonus bets, win or lose, when you place a $5 regular bet. That's $200 in bonus bets, win or lose. The app is easy to use. There's a wide range of options, including spreads, player props, over-unders, and much, much more. So visit FanDuel.com slash UCSS to kick off the NFL season. FanDuel, an official partner of the NFL, an official partner of the Ultimate Cleveland Sports Show. And Steve, if you want to take tag board full, let's give a shout-out to Brian Abrams real quick. He turn five dollars into $6,300 last Sunday with a five-game parlay. Alternate spreads of 100-plus yards for Stephon Diggs, Calvin Ridley, Devon A. Chain, over 100 total yards, DeAndre Hopkins, Jamar Chase. That was a $5 free bet from FanDuel that turned into $6,268.13. So shout-out to Brian. If you wow. want to be like Brian, head over to FanDuel.com slash UCSS. I think what we could do moving forward is if we get enough of these, we pick one – on Thursday, and then that person gets to submit to us a five-team bet for the upcoming weekend that our viewers might be able to double dip on. That's true. I love it. Make them an expert picker for (laughs) Ultimate Cleveland Sports Show and Uh. FanDuel. What a great $5 bet. That's that's incredible. By the way, the latest line at FanDuel remains the Browns minus two and a half at the Colts this week. The over-under is 40 on the game. All right, fairly very good. low over under as well. We're going to keep a close eye on that because it might move depending on what happens with Deshaun Watson today. Yeah. Last week we saw that line grow from I think it started at two and a two half, and, a half. Three, went, and, and it ended up in double digits. It went to ten. Actually, went back to nine and a half the morning before of the game. kickoff. Yeah, but at one right. point it was double digits. Yeah. And that was all dependent on no oh, Deshaun's not going to play. He's not right. going to play. He's not going to play. And that spread started getting wider and wider. Right now, two and a half points. Deshaun did not practice yesterday, so that's obviously not great news. He's to be determined for today. So he's day-to-day, but Stefanski has said if he can't go, P.J. Walker is his guy. He's going to get the start again, and why not? He did just enough to do uh, to get the win over the 49ers. After weeks of mix, mixed messaging here, and we know the problems that they had with trying to get this messaging on point, Yeah, it appears that they're finally at least on the same page with the messaging. Would you guys agree with that? that they've at least corralled that part of this. I, I mean, as of, I think yesterday they did. They were all saying the same things. Right. I'm sure, they finally had a conversation about it. Uh, so that's good. In the end, all that matters though is does Deshaun Watson get back? When does he get back on the field? Right. But it is uh, good to see that. But at it's least good the that they seem to be on the same. Because stage, before yeah. you had the coach saying he could play, the quarterback saying I was never cleared, yeah. the general manager saying he is going to play, and then he didn't. Right. So it was all over the place. I, I'm going to give him credit. I'm going to give him credit because you know <laughs> we, we like to get on Deshaun Watson when he doesn't say the right things sometimes. Right. And this time he saved everybody because he said the right things, and he absolutely had a slam dunk when he came out there and said, "Listen." Here's a tear, so there's no more more speculation on what it is, a bruise, anything. He let everybody know up front, it's a tear. Micro he, tear. Micro tear. Called, yes. He also let everybody know that he's not going to be uh, 100%. He doesn't feel this year. So he's letting people know, hey, I'm going to be fighting through some stuff the rest of this year. Also, he was like, look, I'm, it's day-to-day. I don't know if I'm going to be playing next week. Uh, I really want to get back out there, but it's day to day. We're working with this injury, and I'm doing my best to get back on the field. And then he finally put the nail in the coffin by saying, "You know what? As an organization, as a coaching staff, as a training staff, and with me and my team, we are all on the same page in terms of how we're going to move forward and, and when I'm going to get back yeah, on the field." My only problem with is it took this, it took three uh, weeks to get there, but yes. but they're there, yes. so that's good, Bernie. Yeah. I, Obviously, I, I, I weigh do, in on that and then talk about the injury. Yeah, I, I do like I, I do like how the Browns handled it. And and Big G, to your point about how the Deshaun awesomely handled yesterday. And typically, um, as athletes, as players, if you're the player and you go up there and you say, and you're the one to disclose this, I have a micro tear of my rotator. I have a broken ankle. I have a torn ACL. You're the antichrist in <laughs> in the locker room. Right. So, so from the Browns' perspective, I really like how they're handling it. Okay. Finally. And, I mean, no, you can't well, like you can't like how they handled it early. Well, on. but even three weeks ago, again, and I'm not with the Browns. I'm absolutely not their marketing rep, nor Deshaun's marketing rep. 
But I get how three weeks ago this confusion could have happened. Okay, because, enlighten us because none of us did. Because a micro tear slash a inflamed rotator at first doesn't always appear like it is torn. Okay. And then when you get your first couple opinions on it, now granted technology and medical diagnosis is better in 2023 than it was in the late 80s and early 90s, but ironically, they still do some of the dumb treatments with cortisone shots and injections and that. So when it's really inflamed at the beginning, it sometimes is challenging to know is it that micro tear? Because that might that's be. fair, Bernie. So, and, so then, but why? Why, if you're the general manager, then do you come out on Wednesday? Because now you're more than a week removed from the injury, and say he is going to play against San Francisco, which at the time was ten days away. Yeah, because and I, then I, I as a player was guilty, and I'm saying Deshaun did this, okay? But I know with that micro tear, with that inflamed rotator, and that you're initially told and or a micro tear that does not sound as bad that as a player you really do think you're going to heal and there are and there was move and and during that ravens game you actually saw post his decision not to play you saw him lifting weights right and, and doing, doing the bands and doing some awesome stuff that even in my prime with a healthy healthy shoulder I wasn't capable of doing right. so it absolutely lends itself to oh my god what is the bad messaging but I don't really believe Deshaun himself knew it was as bad at that point and he thought it was going to heal just like Andrew Barry thought it was going to heal on that Wednesday also because as a player on a Wednesday if I'm like close to 80 90 percent because I had this tear and it doesn't really hurt so for the fans out there they're saying he's not tough Oh, it's the too much pain. That is not at all the case. This doesn't really hurt that. What bad. is the problem then? It the doesn't accuracy? hurt. That's why you think you're healthy. Because it doesn't really hurt when we're sitting here, when yep. you're hanging out, when you were resting on that Monday and Tuesday, that Wednesday morning before A B got up there and had that talk. You do feel kind of good. You do think, oh God, give me three more days if sure. I feel good today. So I could And at that time he had ten days. Right. Right. So like, the bye week. But I, then you try to throw. Well then you try to throw, yeah. but because it's Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, I'm only trying to throw 50, 60, 70 percent. Look, I'm not trying to drill my 18-yard comebacks. I'm not trying to drop my 40-yard fades in, a, in the hole versus cover two. If it's blitz zero, I got to loft up a 55 to 60-yard post route. Like, I'm not testing that. But I am testing it a little bit, and that in itself probably showed I thought it was going to be okay. So I actually understand how the Browns, and I've had my issues over years with the Browns. I actually see how that happened. I see how it happened with Deshaun. Okay. And then when you actually do now, now it's 10 days, two weeks later, um, and now you go and you're the queue, and it's feeling good and you're lifting. And then all of a sudden, I was telling Bull, a lot of the stuff, it isn't the pain. It's on maybe 10 to 15% of your throws you get like this involuntary twitch. You get this involuntary muscle movement. So look at me and Jay, dude, we're, we're four yards apart, 12 feet. In my sleep, I could throw it to you. When I had this issue, I floated a check down six feet over the, the, the running back's head. So your accuracy- Because on, of that involuntary spasm. Yeah, and, it, and in a game where your quarterback is so magnified as to what he does, blowing, three to six plays and being off and then causing two to three interceptions. That could be the difference between that the That is the difference yeah. of and, it. And Bernie, you were saying that as you, because you played with the injury yeah. and you were saying as you played, it got worse. It happened more often, Yeah, right? so like I, I had this happen and then I had this happen in 1989. It's week 15. We're playing the Minnesota Vikings here at home. It was, it ends up going into overtime. It's one of the coldest games ever. Mm. It was like minus 20 with the windshield. It goes Shoot. into, um, it goes into overtime, but the field's frozen. And, and that was a back when you were allowed to really do the things you shouldn't do to humans, <laughs> uh, you know, on the field <laughs> at the bottom of piles and yeah. stuff. And, and I was getting my butt kicked from a, their, their pass rush and the awesome, God bless my play against them in college at the University of Pitt, 
Chris Dolman, oh, wow. Minnesota Viking, yeah. Yeah. Hall of Famer, love him, great friend. He killed me that day, okay? <laughs> and and um, and I say that in jest, uh, but that's how I got snapped. I, I had the micro tear of my shoulder. Right. Now it's week uh, 17. We had a bye week then. Yeah. We're going to go week 16 uh, to Houston Astrodome. And if we win the, win the game, we win the division. If we lose the game, um, Warren Moon and the, the Oilers win the division. And again, it's not right out there for young kids and young parents out there, but you live and die by football. Okay, sure. That was it. It was life and death. And it isn't saying this to be a drama queen and what the issues going on in our world and what's happening in the Gaza Strip and Israel and right now that there's way more important things than a football game that, but not to me at that point. So, you know, I decided to play with it. And I went and played that game and we had Sunday night football and I'm so proud, man, I played really good and we won the game. And then had a bye week and because we won the division, the last time the Browns won the division, 1989, and I wasn't gonna let that not happen. Um, but then you get the, and figured I'd get the bye week and it would heal. Now I get to play Buffalo at home in a playoff game. And Jim Kelly was my mentor at the University of Miami. It's a playoff game for, for the Browns. So like there's zero chance I'm gonna miss that. So it, even to the detriment possibly of the team, knowing that I could maybe blow a couple throws, you know, you still feel like you could do it and, and you want to do it. So, so you said it was like 10 to 15, 10 or 15 throws. Did that increase um, when you came back and you didn't rest it against the Buffalo Bills? Did that go up to, say, 20 or 25 throws you had? Well, because that game, it, it, I had a week off and I kind of knew what was happening. And when you give me two weeks, I had a, a really good game plan. So I was able to manipulate some wide open guys to where if I was off a little bit, it didn't matter because they were so friggin' wide open right. to be able to beat Bruce Smith and that. So to have two exceptional games that I'm, again, it sounds terrible being on a show. I'm so proud of it. I think it's kind of why a lot of people like me and are proud of, you know, my oh, toughness. Oh, that stretch put doing, you on the map is, you is already. doing those games and being five years, the first five years of my career, me and Marino, and Joe Flacco, the only ones to get our teams in the playoffs and then to win a home game like that and crush the Bills. And, and the Bills are a team that didn't, then didn't lose for four more years and culminated where I got the Super Bowl ring against them. But I say all that as background, not to promote myself. That was in December, January. Okay, it's The San Francisco game and the Baltimore Ravens game was weeks five and six. This Indianapolis Colts game is week whatever seven. Yeah, he's okay. He's got I then to went go. to I then went to Denver for the AFC Championship game in 1989 with rubber bands on my finger. Big G to your astute point. The four or five throws was ten throws in Buffalo, but I was able to mask it and manipulate it with an exceptional game plan. Um, by Denver, I I was off. Okay, I blew about four throws. Two were picked off. You can't do that. Okay, I'm sick to this day about it. I'm proud as hell. We won the division, beat Warren Moon. Proud that I beat Jim Kelly. Got the, the third AFC Championship game in five years. But I was not capable to play winning football that day, and I would not have been able to play winning football two weeks later. So I say that as not to Sean Watson's apologist or marketing rep. Like, if he goes out there now and he runs more than me, and we're playing on AstroTurf this week. If I'm the defensive lineman, I hate to say this, parents, I'm drilling a shoulder into the ground. Sure, I'm going to accelerate will. and amplify that that shoulder's hurt again. We forget, we may not forget the Frisco game right away, but we do forget these October games when it becomes December and January. And Deshaun Watson and the Cleveland Browns, Coach Stefanski, we're all judged by what we do in December and January. And that's, if he kept playing, I believe if he would have played against Baltimore, played against Frisco, he could have probably, maybe he could have done it. He, we could have maybe done it. But man, when we need the big dog, okay, in January, and this team is showing nobody wants to play us 
in January right now with this defensive line. But you got to get to January. We got to get yeah. there. I got it. I got so you. So which you quarterback get there. are you going out and Well, signing? but the quarterback. But look at how the 49ers defense was so killer coming into that game. And we don't have Deshaun Watson. And we don't have Joel Petonio. Okay. And De- DeJuan Jones is the right tackle. And we've been abusing Jedrick Wills. And still Coach Callahan and Coach Stefanski get us north of 160 yards rushing. That travels nobody. So yeah, you're so saying just keep running the rock? Figure it out. Playing that great defense and wait for Deshaun to get healthy whenever that might be. Figure oh. it out. And if you get it, I know, okay, I'm a homer. I'm a Cleveland guy. I want to play all home Cleveland playoff games. This team just, Jimmy Johnson line, somehow, some way, get to the playoffs. Because th- with running the ball and stopping that the That travels. That travels. Bertie, man. let's say he sits for a month, another month. He's already been out. This will, this will be four weeks, I think. Well, four weeks week. from the injury on Sunday. Yeah. So let's say he sits for eight weeks and then comes back. Is he still going to have this issue? Okay, so. Without uh, no, you know, I mean, it's a different person. You never know. You sure, had a whole off season to heal. I'm launching, I'm launching the CosarWellness.com today, October 19th. This isn't a, a plug to start talking about my health and wellness, but it's absolutely those injuries and those type things are absolutely how I've come to figure out how to do my health and wellness right now. And one of the big phrases, I love the University Hospital, Dr. Voos, and what the orthopedic people do with the Cleveland Browns there, okay? But in the old days, Dr. Voos was not my doctor, and we had some really good doctors, John Bergfeld in the Cleveland Clinic. Um, but after I left some of those docs, there were doctors that I had in my past who would always say to, um, you can't do any more damage. You've done as much damage as possible. Right. So, bull to your question, Mm -hmm. the micro tear does not go away and you can do more damage for it. So, the answer you'll probably start hearing is we're going to strengthen the muscles in and around it to help protect it. So, the statistical chance that it is 100% healed in a month uh, to 100% probably isn't there, but do you get it strong enough to where the involuntary twitches, the involuntary muscle movements, um, not that again, it does not that it hurts. It just makes you not play good. Yeah. Okay. And interceptions are worse than death. Okay. <laughs> so there's, there's nothing worse than that. Right. So, and again, uh, we're probably up against a break and stuff. We yelled and we fought and I got people saying he's, he's afraid of the pain. We had Baker Mayfield go out there and play through this, okay? And And like we were saying earlier, and if you blow your half dozen plays out of toughness, out of will to win, out of love for our brothers in the locker room, that you don't want to let the guy down, and all of a sudden you don't make a couple plays, they're going to crucify you more. And look what it's done for Baker's career. And I love what Baker did. I, I, I did it. I was that person. I played through it. There was no doctors that were going to talk to me, but I know... I would not have, uh, at that age, I would have probably talked him into it. And then I know I'd have been useless in December. I probably would have been useless. When, if you were the Browns, knowing what you went through, and he's dealing with the same injury, and that he's probably not going to be 100% no matter what happens this, he, this year, do, do you, like, as good as the defense is, right? The running game played well last week, but it's been inconsistent since Nick Chubb went out. But knowing you have a cha- what we appears to be a championship level defense, you can't I, in this day and age. I don't think you can win a Super Bowl with a quarterback as bad as PJ Walker, in my opinion. No matter how good your defense is, but I think you could win. You could certainly win it with a Kirk Cousins, maybe even an Andy Dalton. I don't know how much Andy Dalton's got left, but at least he's been in the league. Would you go out and try to get a at least serviceable veteran that's in the league and playing right now, just to have an upgrade over Walker if Watson just can't get to one hundred percent? So, it's a super fair question. Yeah. I've, I am mostly fixated on what's currently happening. I really like how P.J. Walker somehow, some way, used the Jimmy Johnson line and showed an, a real cool uh, coolness or calmness to win in the game. But you're probably right to get to the promised land, yeah. okay? There probably needs to, would want to be another uh, level of, of backup QB. But I'm not overly fixated on that more as how to the Deshaun and him getting healed 
and or best getting him healed to get him to where he is close enough to uh, healthy in these playoff games slash playoff run in December. Yeah. And again, it's not a, a plug to some of the stuff I'm doing because I had the injury, but because I had the injury and I fixated on some of the wrong ways that were treated. And unbelievably, don't you dare anybody do a cortisone shot out there. Okay, that, that caveman way of doing stuff, they still do that for us men. I'm sure, uh, yeah. I'm sure okay. Sean had one. So, but that, that inhibits and delays the ability to heal when I need you healed or I want you healed it's a in a couple months. It. It's a Band-Aid. We don't need the Band-Aid for October. Okay, it's, there's a master's program of health and wellness that I do that is legal, healthy, and, 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 and organic as opposed to medically and, and pharmaceutical based. Let me ask you a question, and I, I hate to go back to this, but on the messaging point, you said you were okay with it because they probably didn't know. Wouldn't it still have been a better look knowing that, look, maybe he won't be ready? I, I, what we... I think what we had a problem with was the the coach had said on Monday he could have gone. He was cleared. He chose not to put the Sean in a bad light. Two days later, in an effort to dig out of that hole, the general manager said, however, he will play in 10 days. Mm-hmm. Wrong again. I don't think they protected Deshaun Watson or did him any favors no. at all. Why not say, Bernie, on Wednesday, if you're the GM, look, we're dealing with a pretty serious injury to the mechanic that he – that is the engine to throwing the football. Our hope is that he's on the field in 10 days from now against San Francisco. But we don't know, so we're going to take we're going to take a wait and see approach. Yeah. I just think they 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 didn't do him any favors by saying, "Yeah, he's going to play." Yeah, he could have played. I concur with that, but again, I'm I feel like I'm PJB for the Browns defending him. Um <laughs> And again, just objectively, I absolutely get how that happened, as I was saying earlier. I, did, I understand that, because but they the should have on the court. I no. do think the way you characterized Stefanski's comments a little unfair. Dang. I don't think he, he was cleared to play. Okay, let me let me try to <clears throat> fix yeah, that. Yeah, yeah. He was cleared to play yesterday. Yeah. But made he made the decision not right, to. Right, right, right. Okay, yeah, that's so, that's that's better. Okay, yeah. I, I, I don't yeah. know how I said it, so, but yeah. I, I do want to be fair and accurate. Yeah, no, so I think you. that's better. I think. And then on yeah. Wednesday, when two days later. Right. When the general manager comes out and says, yeah, he's going to play we expect against him to San play. Francisco. Yeah, I, mean, I just think that the messaging was bad. I think they've had better messaging this week. They've spoken. They're Be- finally on the right page. Because they beat the Niners, it I think City. nobody's really worried about it. But in no. inflama- yeah. and to the Browns' defense and in why players need, and it's good to have second opinions, um, and again, I, li- I like Dr. Vuz, and I really like what UH does, is um, – the the ability to diagnose a micro tear at times with massive inflammation yes very difficult is, so in the first 72 to 96 hours those three to four well, Bernie, days you could you could miss it the mri then, didn't show that the mri Nick Chubb had a torn acl yeah, right. yeah. i had yeah, an yeah. mri on a knee that had yeah. a torn acl and they said we're not sure yeah. we'll know when we go in I right think the, yeah yes. i think the question now guys based on what bernie has told us and Obviously, Bernie is not Deshaun. They're two different human beings. Sure. But this is clo- as close to what Deshaun is going through as humanly possible. I the think The exact so. same injury for a professional quarterback for the same team. Right. Okay? <laughs> and even though everybody's body is a little different, this is the closest possible example we can have. Best example. My question to all of us is, based on the knowledge Bernie just gave us that nobody else has, what do the Browns do? I'm going to stick to my assessment that I've said all along. He doesn't put a foot on the football field until he is 100%. But well, Bernie I says, know, but Bernie or, also said yeah. involuntarily the ball might sail. If that happens at the most critical time of the game, the yeah. win becomes a loss. Exactly. But he said that, that maybe with an extra month, he's close enough that that's not going to happen. Let me, let me, I just need to, I need yeah. to, I need to see in practice that out of his 50 throws, none of them involuntarily sail. Six yeah, you can't, he can't head. play in a big game No, that if, way. if yeah. that is a symptom me, of this injury, I can't put him let, out there. Let me, let me gather a few more, a few more nuggets of information. <laughs> um, are you more likely uh, to hurt, we hurt that shoulder in a contact type of deal where you get hit, drove into the turf, or are you able to re-injure this thing if you're just trying to get a lot on the ball? 
Say he's trying to get driving downfield and trying to get that's something going. That's a good question. Yeah. Great, great point. So that's why I'm trying to buy time. Okay, so there's a different mindset that is in the middle of the season to try to survive the end of the season. So, yes, you, you could hurt it more by getting driven into the ground. So by, um, say, a month or six weeks from now, the uh, chance of it getting hurt by just a throwing motion, a uh, involuntary twitch when he's just throwing is probably real less likely. Then the, the, the part is the getting slammed into the ground. And then as, if I was more involved with him, and I don't say this for young parents, young kids out there, don't do this, but we're the pros now, so it's different, is um, I would have my mindset at the end of the season. So um, if, it's one thing to play and know you could get through two, three, four games. There'll be a stage where if, if it's still out there and it gets hurt, you, you may want to still consider Did not. you ever need surgery on the micro tear to your rotator cuff, or did it heal and you played the rest of your career and it was never an issue for you? Um, to this day, this is as straight as my right arm goes. This is not a cheap excuse to That's show my elbow, Super Bowl ring. It's <laughs> That's the elbow and shoulder. Terrifying, yeah. No, it's the elbow's <laughs> terrible, okay? But the shoulder is. So The shoulder is okay. By the terrible. way, I don't no, think it's terrible. terrible. So you never had surgery to fix it? No, I had a yeah. little surgery. It didn't fix it. I had yeah. it too late. Oh, okay. okay, so it's too, and then the cortisone, it's why I'm so into my holistic healing and what to do. Proteolytic enzymes, please don't do the anti-inflammation ones, and don't do the cortisone shots. I, I, it doesn't work. I was joking with Bull. I, I, look, I want to act like a tough guy here. I don't even want to shake hands anymore because your hand melts. It falls off, <laughs> wow. okay? By the way, Bernie's got... It doesn't got, work. We, we have to acknowledge, I don't know, this is, we've never mm-hmm. talked about this before. Ber- I, not that you don't know this from when he played, but maybe, like, Bernie's hands and fingers are huge. Huh. Well, it, huge. It always have been. Huh. It helps they're all, bro- they're all broken from the center. I think, would, I think he would call it arthritis pool. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. It, it had to help <laughs> when you played, though. Right, yeah. yeah. There's been a lot of talk recently about having small hands. I, I mean, yeah. I guess the, the yeah, bottom anyway. line of this whole thing is it, you're telling us that he needs to be as close to 100% as he could be, and that might not be Sunday in Indy. No. It might not be right. next Sunday right. when and they even, play Seattle. Even, yeah. Look, at he can't be 100% right now. So what I'd be worried about, look, I want to see him play, okay? But what I'd absolutely be worried about, if I was his buddy, if I was his coach, and if I, even if I wasn't his buddy, if I just wanted to win the Super Bowl, okay, and I just wanted him to be here quarterbacking for the stretch run and for the playoffs, I wouldn't want him get his shoulder yeah. jammed into the it's pavement. It's almost like it's Groundhog would, Day, yeah. and the Browns have so you, a do-over on what the, what happened with Baker but, Mayfield. But they, oh, exactly. So look at they're going. If he plays in October, and November, and it isn't healed, the the statistical chance that it's going to get drilled into the ground, that yeah. you're coming through, and every the guy whacks up. me, he hits me over here, I fall over yeah. here like that. It's going to happen. Let, let me ask you and, this, and, wait, wait, I'm yeah, sorry. Go ahead, go ahead. Go ahead. Real, real, and we how, have some news on P.J. Walker. No, right? on Sean Watson. Oh, Amari I thought you Cooper, said P.J. Oh. Amari Cooper just said that Deshaun's going to practice today. Okay. Yeah. So ah, he'll be back in the field as soon as 1 o'clock now, this afternoon. I, I'm guessing is this where they're going to really put the eyeballs on him and task – whether or not he can drive those out, outside the number. Yeah. What kind of throws he can make, what kind of, because it's still early enough. If there's throws he can't make, you can still put a game plan together, like you said, for, for against, against Buffalo, yeah. that allows him to make the throws he's comfortable with and not have to make the ones that he can't make. Correct, except, and thanks, man, for that information, but I want to yell out there and say, don't try to go 100% right now because you're still Big G. You're so right. I'm still at the ability or possibility of carrying it, the micro tear. With a throw. With a throw. Okay? So if I'm 75% and I'm feeling good and I tweak it with a power throw, it's now not a micro tear. It's a torn rotator, and now he's done That's for it. the year. Yeah, okay, so that. that is the possibility. So I, they know that. So yeah. they're not going to uh, go 100% today. This is but again, I go to 
I, I know the kid wants to play. I, he want, he doesn't want to deal with this stuff. He likes playing. Players play. And like, but what he did in that awesome game, okay, where we dominated, okay, he was running the ball and he was hitting his check down. So the arm may have been slur- slightly torn then beforehand. So with him running the ball as much as he is to kind of get his timing back, I think he's opening himself up to issues yeah. now to where I think he could get through this game on, on Sunday. Like, I got through a couple games, and I actually played really good, and people will say, okay, it's cool. But then late December, okay, and it's 25-mile-an-hour winds, mm. and it's then cold. Every, every throw takes yeah. mustard. Down. Everything's hard, even in perfection. Yeah. Like, it, it's a torture to throw at our stadium. And I pride myself, I'm not statistically a good quarterback, but I prided myself that I was a better statistical quarterback than the other guy. Right, okay? that's Because it's to do. torture to play there, even in good health. So yeah. I don't want to see him having to try to throw, throw I, that. I still would sit him. You know I what? Him. I wouldn't play him. Yeah. You know what makes, based on what Bernie has said here, and like, like we're not Deshaun, we don't know what's going on inside his body, but you would assume that, He's going to make the best decision for himself, but you never know with players, as right. Bernie has said. What seems to make the most sense is to bring him back for the Baltimore game on November 22nd. Yeah. That would be two months. That would be two days shy of two full months, so basically two months. Yeah. You could win the next three games You at the Colts, at the Seahawks, Cardinals at home. Whoever's their quarterback, they should be able to win that Colts game and the Cardinals game. The Seahawks no. game on the road, that's obviously a lot tougher. But I think they can win two of the next three with P- even P.J. Walker. And if you do that, well, then you're five and four and hopefully get a healthy Watson for the final, you know, yeah. eight it, it, games of the it's year. It's a good plan, and maybe they go into Indy that way. I don't know that, that way, they're going to do if, that. if they do and P.J. looks terrible and they lose that game, it does put a bigger priority on getting them ready for Seattle. Yes. Because if, you, if, you're, if you're losing at Indy, the likelihood that you're going to go to Seattle and beat the Seahawks there, it's right, not good. Right, but if you lose him in Seattle, now the trade deadline is passed and you have no other options. And, and Other than signing someone who's on the streets. Right, right. Which yeah. probably isn't. And who hasn't played. You since. want someone that's at least in practice, mm-hmm. in, that went through a camp, they're on a roster right now, right. and they're ready today. 